Hello my soccer universe and welcome to this week's Bundesliga's review as I try to call them now. What do you say? Three new jerseys, everything's moved around. The only team that is three times present is of course Laska chose all three of the European shirts from last season. Getting somewhere, I'm also wearing what I consider the classic Lask jersey from the mid 90s by Reebok. Lask, as you can tell, has won. But we will not spend too much time on Lusk because, to, to, to be honest, the uh, German Bundesliga is the one where we have most of the stuff. I'm actually taping this while on the screen here on the side. We have uh, Betis struggling with Atletico Madrid or maybe the other way around. So, you know, I might be a little bit distracted. But headlines. Uh, I think a headline that uh, did not really see... I mean, I heard rumors about it, but didn't think it's possible is that we're back at FC Hollywood, meaning uh, Bayern Munich is showing its chaotic uh, nature. And I'm not talking about all the injuries that they have, no. It is that uh, probably the best coach uh, in recent times will want, out, will want out because of a power struggle. Unbelievable. We had also many, many goals scored, uh, especially in the afternoon. Uh, the best one was between Frankfurt and Wolfsburg, which we have hanging up there now. Uh, seven goals, uh, Frankfurt winning that one, the duel of the two Austrian coaches. Um, we have Dortmund barely clinging on to the chance of landing in the Champions League. Um, we have a rare Schalke win and we have especially a lot of drama in the relegation fight where unfortunately Köln at the moment seems to be very clearly on the way down. Uh, in Austria, as I said, Lask bounced back uh, with a yeah, semi-convincing win. And I think we know already who the new old champion is because Salzburg, again, has it easy over a bit. Um, but we will start in Germany. We I have to tell you about the German Cup. Uh, cannot tell you much, actually. I know that Bremen got a, some say lucky, some say professional win at Jan Regensburg, uh, which is not too far too too far from here as well. Yo Osako uh, scoring just after halftime the winning winning goal and now Bremen will face Leipzig in a uh, in in the semi-final which curiously was also one of the matches this weekend. Before that didn't see much but Bielefeld beat Freiburg 1-0 through a own goal so through San Santa Maria uh, I think Bielefeld should have won probably by 2-0 it was, but it was not a good game overall. Um, and then we are already at Bayern Munich, um, who of course, as you would expect, uh, dominate possession and the game against Union Berlin, but uh, having six changes in the first team squad to start uh, the game and then uh, getting even more in injuries uh, in with Coman, come, 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 come off with a slight in in injury, Jerome Boateng, who is not gonna get renewed. Lots of stuff um, that didn't seem all right, but it was Musiala who ac actually was the in the game probably the most um, vital figure there because uh, he scored after another Thomas Müller assist he scores the winner and the funny thing is when you see the winner uh, scored Leroy Sané is already ce celebrating before the shot is taken um, and it was by no means because he was totally off balance but he saw that one uh, and Bayern seemed to hang on but then a rather weird goal by Union where um, I think and uh, the ball comes from Andre, but before that, the ball is actually rolling seemingly out, but you don't know whether it's fully out, but the Union Berlin player is taking already the ball up, and then with a foul out, probably uh, puts the ball back into, into play into Andre, who crosses into Ingwertsen to make it 1-1. One, one. Uh, Union was threatening, probably this somewhat deserved that draw, uh, and Bayern probably was also lucky to get uh, at least a point out of the other, so Bayern definitely would have won, a, won that one. However, the big story at Bayern is that uh, Salih Hamidzic, the sporting director, is not very happy that Flick is still relying on the old guard of players, uh, namely, you know, your Alabas, your Boatengs, uh, and, and some players that uh, are on the way out 
and not all the new players that Sally Hamidzic brought in. And what's even more, uh, Karl-Heinz Rummenigge is backing Flick. Um, I even heard uh, on Sky, uh, Lothar Matthäus very publicly supporting, I mean, he's a friend, uh, Flick as well. Uh, Khan is caught in the middle. And um, Uli Hoeneß, who is only the honorary president or something, something like that, is of course backing uh, Sally Ham. Ham Ham and Kamichi Jones. Uli Hoeneß still has the strongest voice. Khan, as I said, is called, called in the middle. And all the, all the rumors say that coming uh, next week after the Champions League, Hansi Flick will sit down with Oli, o, o, Oliver Khan, who is like the operating president at the moment, to ask whether he can go. Uh, to ask for a release so that he can join and train the national team. This to me seems unfathomable. This was a team that before Hans Flick came, came on, yes, they won the championship under Niko Kovac, but it was definitely not a great team. Hans Flick came in, changed the uh, style of play, and suddenly Bayern is the best team in the world if they have all the players available. And then there's such an idiotic power struggle that yeah, probably that will be the reason why Bayern will not be able to make 10 in, in, in a row and I surely will not be unhappy ha, 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 happy about that. It just, the, I mean, I always say that Bayern is probably the best run club in Europe, but that's exactly the one thing, this eternal power, power, power struggle and that everything is leaked in the media the, uh, and everything well connected there, you know, no, there's not much direct communication within the club, very, very often it always goes via the media, this was in the 90s, uh, a sign of, of, of times, I thought this was a thing of the past, but seemingly, nope, it is not enhanced if Lick doesn't want to have all that grief and that's why he wants to leave, yeah. Good for him if you can graduate to probably if you're somewhat successful the German national team as German national team team coach where you will coach many of the same players seems like a comfy position to be in to to, 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 to be honest but you know let's see where uh, it will end end up but it's one of those things that I just cannot uh, believe um, is happening actually but it is. Frankfurt Wall, Wolfsburg, the two Austrian coaches sitting in three and four were facing each other and boy was this an amazing game. Uh, seven goals scored, um, both halves at the beginning take a similar turn with Wolfsburg scoring score first, Frankfurt coming back to score two. Uh, Riedle Baku with a really nice goal gives Wolves lead, but uh, just two minutes later uh, Kamada can find the e equalizer then a uh, typical Frankfurt and Frankfurt was extremely efficient a little bit like PSG Wolfsburg who actually had only conceded two goals this year and were having most of the shots and most of the possession and and, and so on just couldn't get the end pro that Frankfurt did get and so uh, Andre Silva to Luka Jovic 2-1 Frankfurt right after the half Wout Weghorst uh, sets uh, things level but you know Andre Silva needs to get his goal and then Eric Durm after I think Andre Silva hit the, uh, the post also gets in and 61st it's 4-2 uh, you think every, every everything is fine uh, until Stefan Ilsek who already a second goal was not really uh, looking good uh, was also caught out of position a little bit and then Tutor um, makes an own goal uh, right in front of um, Brekalo. Um, and then uh, Wolfsburg was pressing and probably could have found the equalizer, which definitely would have been deserved there. Gladbach against Hertha, very remarkable remark game because Jan Sommer was sent off in the 13th minute and Gladbach had to play for over 80 minutes, including st stoppage time, by, with 10 men. Then they go even down to um, in the 23rd, in, in, in but just before the half, they can uh, turn, turn around a uh, player uh, with a first and then a Stindl pen penalty. Turn, turns around a uh, quarter by the 50th. What well, long discussion whether this should uh, count or not, but in the end it was fine. Uh, gets the equalizer, uh, Hertha, who really need the points, was a little bit pressing for a win as well, but it ends 2-2. And uh, that showed that the Gladbach team still has some life in it. Bremen, Leipzig, with not much we can talk about because Leipzig just uh, said, yeah, Bremen want to make a statement ahead of the semi-final? Nope. Olmo, twice and uh, twice Sirloth make it pretty pretty clear. Uh, a modicum of hope was given when Rajica could convert the panel 61st, but that was really only modicum because uh, two minutes later Savica 
keeps the uh, makes the fourth keeps the three goal advantage uh, for Le Leipzig who played at home safely. May I just say uh, already the Hertha Gladbach jersey, jersey matchup was weird, but Bremen Le Leipzig green against red. Please think of the colorblind a little bit because that also doesn't look quite right. Dortmund had to fight hard and also with some uh, in injuries um, to get the win at Stuttgart, uh, a game that Stuttgart definitely should have also gotten a draw out of it. Their first goal through Kalajdzic is one of those uh, headers where the goalkeeper doesn't look good, but it is such nicely placed parabola going in into the back of the of net that you just have to a little bit marvel at it. Uh, Jude Bellingham gets the equalizer right after the half and Marco Reus turns it and come completely around the 52nd. On the balance of play, I mean Dortmund had more possession, but Stuttgart was clinically. They had a huge miss um, right after the, the, the 2 1. But then uh, the Davi gets the equalizer when Dortmund is caught on a counter attack with the lead uh, in the 78th. And at that moment, you really thought that Stuttgart could turn the game around again. However, um, Ansgar Knauf, who debuted against City uh, during the week, uh, 19 year old. Um, despite the name dark skin, but you know, not that this matters much, but it's just uh, when I hear Ansgar, I don't uh, necessarily expect that uh, um, face. But yeah, that was the only thing that Hall, Hall, Hall did. He played, played the ball to Knauf, who then puts it in the net in the 80th and gives Dortmund a very, very exciting win. And uh, I'm actually quite, quite happy to see such a young guy uh, having a great week first uh, debut, his star starting 11 debut against City and now scoring the winner. Uh, we also have to say that Mats Hummers had to come, come, come off. He uh, was completely out of it in many ways. Uh, his, um, his circulation did not work and he uh, was nauseous. Um, and I think also Marco Reus didn't look all that happy coming off um, all that healthy. Schalke get a win against Augsburg. Ugly goal, I have, I have to say. And then Kern against Mainz, I watched that one. And despite many of the games that I saw a little bit going my direction this uh, today, I have, I have to say this one left a bit of taste. The first goal by Boetius uh, in the 11th was actually a very nicely taken shot. Um, and you thought, okay, Mainz is now getting the win. And Mainz have been really great. I mean, uh, see, uh, this year, I think they have uh, gotten over 21 points, I mean, uh, increasing their points total by a factor of four. So uh, I, I, I think the Mainz will probably be rather safe, uh, especially after that win. And given that they were down and out uh, midway through the first half of the season, uh, that's a pretty remarkable comeback. Um, however, they did not play all that well in the first half and um, were really hoping to just get with the lead into the half time. However, then a uh, debatable uh, hands pen penalty, yes, by the letter of the law, fortunately they're changing it. The ball hits the player, but it is from three millimeters away, it gets hit, doesn't look. And there's definitely no, um, you know, intention to play, to handle the ball uh, there. However, that Duda then converts the penalty gives only the fair result to Köln that they get the equalizer and that has has been this was an intense game but it was not a rough game that you would expect in a relegation fight this was very much a game uh, that saw a lot of nice play a lot of attacking moves and especially from a Köln side who really dug in um, and actually in the second half they reward themselves when a Hector free kick Goes around uh, the wall more, more, more or less in in, in, in the box. Sichos almost gets it, but fortunately he did not because uh, Skiri, who would otherwise be offside, can take it and pulls puts it in the internet. Goalkeeper attempt was a little bit called out of it. And at that point, it really seemed like Kern could run away with this one. However, Skiri uh, slips and Kern is called on the car 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 where uh, Boetius puts a nice cross in that Onisivo in the 65th, so only four minutes later, converts for the 2-2. And then suddenly Köln was shaking. Um, yes, they were really going for the win, but they were always in, in danger of catch, catching a counter-attack. And just when you thought that the game is a little bit uh, imbalanced and will end with, with a draw, 
not helping either one of those teams, um, especially not Köln. Uh, Barrero uh, scores the winner with a nice shot, but if you look just at the sets, I think Köln won the expected goals battle by 3 to 1.4 or something like, like, like that. Even the coach for uh, Mainz afterwards said Bo Svensson, uh, it was probably a rather lucky win on our side. And of course, everyone is now uh, wondering whether uh, the Köln coach will continue. I personally think it would be way too late to, to change and the team showed that they're actually fighting. Unfortunately, their schedule doesn't really work in their favor. We have a game on Monday, but you know, I'll give you the result next week. So let's go straight, straight to the standings. Um, as I said, Dortmund has a mini school chance to make it in, in the Champions League as does Leverkusen at the moment, but pretty much the top four are the top four. So let's go straight to the bottom of the table. And yes, Köln now really looks bad and it hurts a little bit because not too long ago they were up there and they play well. They are just very unlucky in the way that they're playing. So, uh, and if I look at Scare, they have now the next up two rather unwinnable games against Leipzig and Leverkusen, and then it gets a little bit better. But by that time, Bielefeld, who are the main competitors, have very winnable games against Schalke and Hertha. So, yeah, that Hertha is still in there is also rather, rather surprising. Mine still give them here a chance of going down, but they, they are trending, they are definitely in the right direction. And I think Mainz probably will not be bothered with the relegation. It's really between Hertha, uh, Bielefeld and Köln, I would say. Uh, especially if we look at the expected standings, I mean, it tells the same story, more, more, more or less. Um, and you see here Dortmund is more or less on the fifth spot. And if you look down, uh, same ch ch chances here. Mainz still give them a chance to be in there. I actually think Mainz and Hertha should switch places, just that Hertha has a much higher rating due to having a uh, much um, nominally a better squad. I already said in the last in the next round, Köln has a rather in, um, non-winnable game against Leverkusen. Wolfsburg Bayern could be an interesting one. Um, Frankfurt Gladbach also. Um, Dortmund Bremen, take your pick in, in 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 a way. I think at the moment it's really about re relegation. If you look here, Mainz against Hertha is another relegation final. Uh, that yeah, if Mainz wins that one, it could do a favor to both Köln and Bielefeld. Bielefeld away to Augsburg. Augsburg now we needs to win this 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 one to stay safe. And Köln against Leverkusen. I mean Leverkusen. Yeah, we have to have to see tomorrow. They have not been playing all that great as of late. But this is a game that Kern rarely has won lately. In Austria, um, Lask gets the win over Wolfsburg. I think it was deserved. The uh, first goal was beautiful uh, because free kick, you know, from the corner flag close to the box. Uh, it seems like it is swung an in swinger. No, it is uh, laid back. And so um, Ramstel can take a really nice shot. Pull it in, in the net, Lask again misses to make the second goal. Then um, uh, Röcher with a great lob also from the outside of the box equalizes. And then a penalty given for once Lask can convert and get a deserve it, but not a great win. Uh, Sturm turns as right against Tirol uh, to stay also in the Champions uh, or in the Europa League conversation. And most importantly, Salzburg completely dominates Rapid. I think the scene was actually uh, the scene of, of the game was actually right at the beginning when three players, two Rapid players and a Salzburg player, uh, go up for a header. But the Salzburg player in the last second actually kind of pulls a little bit back, and so the two Rapid players collide and are completely out of it af afterwards. That was a hard knock, and that's how Rapid played. I mean, they had no chance. Uh, even the referee help, help, helped them with Duck uh, having two goals disallowed, Andre Ramalio gets the first one in the 36th, finally one has, has to say. Then uh, in the 46th, Hoffmann for Rapid is sent off, and then Salzburg just scores two more goals late in stoppage time, but it should have been by that time already 3-0. Uh, Rapid cannot win Sal against Salzburg. The only team that I think has a little bit of chance, maybe Stumm, but definitely Lusk, who have been giving them the toughest choice, but Lusk is uh, also very, very, um, yeah, beaten up, I have to say. And so we see in the season when Salzburg is champions, we don't need to talk much about it, it goes for the Champions League spot and the Europa League spots. I think this is between Rapid, Lask and Sturm, uh, probably ending in this order, especially if we look at the um, expected table, it tells as much. 
in the next round Salzburg plays at home to Lask. I'm not very happy about that, but the only thing is Rapid plays against Sturm, so um, probably the one and two will win, and then it's really uh, Rapid and Salzburg first, Rapid second, Lask uh, and Sturm for third spot, which uh, is a safe Europa League spot. That's it for me for this uh, weekend. As I said, it's not a full uh, full week weekend yet. Uh, let me know what you thought about the Bundesliga, especially about the development at Bayern and what you think will happen in the relegation fight in Germany, which is this year around, uh, this year probably the most exciting thing. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell icon as it will remind you whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.